Removed from the frozen lands of hell, a man finds himself in a paradise that can only be described as heaven. A man finds himself amongst sun and beaches. Should he go to the beach and swim? Nay, this man would instead find beer and comics. This man would read those comics and then sit on a fifth floor balcony in which just 48 hours before he had peed off into a birdbath after drinking far too much. Then this man would check himself back into the care of the inmates as Burpee's comic book asylum goes to Hawaii. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Uh, welcome to Burpee's Comic Book Asylum. It's been a long time, but uh, I figured we'd touch base and, and get this going once more. Um, hopefully, I can continue to do this. I say this every time, really, but I hope I can continue to make this an ongoing thing. Um, I apologize if you hear birds and squeaking and activity. Um, I'm actually in Hawaii right now. Let's go ahead and share the view. It's a fucking gorgeous day in paradise. Um, so. We're gonna make this quick because I'm gonna get out there and go sit down and read some uh, some of my current purchases. Give me one second. Ugh, sorry, had to get some stuff. So uh, today my plan is to go sit out there, drink a little bit, um, which is pretty much what I've done the entire time I've been here, which has been awesome. Hang out at the beach. Um, but my plan today is to go ahead and go sit on lawn and read the rest of DMZ Volume 7 so I can get it back to David. Um, so far, DMZ is some awesome stuff. If you're not reading DMZ, uh, I'd highly suggest that I'd go back and get the trade paperbacks for sure. Uh, it, it's a great title. Um, some great art, some great Brian Wood writing. Um, yeah, so overall good stuff. Um, then, I'm going to maybe get through the filth. I'm having a hard time getting started on it, honestly. Uh, Grant Morrison stuff, so really, really crazy shit. Um, uh, but yeah, um, that is a pretty damn cool cover, though, with all the little sperm dudes. Um, so, overall, that should be pretty good. We'll see. Um, and then two things I picked up while I've been here. Uh, the trade paperback for Infinite Crisis, uh, which I infinitely enjoyed, despite its infinite tie-ins. Uh, and yes, it's true, you can infinitely use the word infinite in an infinite run-on sentence. Oh, snap. So, uh, gonna go ahead and go enjoy that. I've read it, but it'd be nice to read it again after the longest time. Uh, and then after that, I've got X-Men Messiah Complex. Um, it was a little looks a little spendy, I think. Um, sitting at four at thirty bucks for this, um, but still, I mean, it, you know, nice looking pages and, and so on and so forth. And uh, overall, one of my favorite X Men tales in, in quite a long time. So uh, worth picking up. Uh, so that's my required reading for today. Um, if I get to it all, and I probably won't. I'll probably get down there for about thirty minutes, and uh, my my son will come home from the aquarium with his mom, and that'll be the end of that. Um, speaking of my son, though, I picked him up this today at the gift shop. Um, it's not really a gift shop as much as like a little quickie mart. I don't know why I called it a gift shop. Um, but we're staying in some condos, and they've got a little gift shop, and they've got this little book, Web Swinging Hero, or Web Slinging Superhero. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Uh, you know, whatever. Whenever I can put comic book stuff in my kid's hand, it's, uh, it's the way to go. So, that's what we got there. Um, and also, since I've been here, I took some time to read uh, Jonathan Ames' The Alcoholic uh, from Vertigo, uh, art by Dean Haspiel. Um, it's, it's a pretty cool title. Uh, I mean, there's not much here that you wouldn't want. You've got an alcoholic, nope, not safe for work or children. Uh, you've got nudity, you've got cunnilingus. Uh, you just kind of got everything you need in this. Um, overall, it's a pretty good story. Um, it's very awkward, I guess you could say, um, as you're as you're reading it. Um, it's very true to uh, supposedly it's it's very true to this guy's life, the writer Jonathan Ames. Um, there's definitely a blend of fiction in there somewhere, but where it starts and where it ends, I don't know. Um, I don't know that a lot of people know, um, but it's it's pretty uh, pretty renowned, I guess. I mean, if you look at the back, it's got a lot of you know write-ups. Um, I'd never even heard of it, um, but I, I really did find it enjoyable. It's just a, you know, black and white. A, I sat down and read it in one read, um, really quick, uh, 100, 136 pages. Um, basically follows this guy through his entire life, um, and in he has all kinds of issues, you know, like most people do, and that's what makes it relatable. 
Um, but on top of that, he's an alcoholic, uh, a functioning alcoholic, but an alcoholic nonetheless, and, and oftentimes a drug user. Um, various drugs, various times. Um, and it, it gets into all kinds of things, like there's parents by Bill Clinton, um, it deals with 9-11, uh, and the 9-11 stuff for me was some of the, the best parts of this, um, mainly because when you're looking at it, um, at 9-11 in general, you hear a lot of stories, but you don't get as many of the ground level stories, you get the overall feeling of dread in New York. Um, this touches on a bunch of stuff that um, I would never even heard cover, you know, people going to the roofs and things like that, um, and just a real ground level feel for them breaks your heart um, and reminds you how tragic 9-11 was. Um, so. Uh, overall, I think this was a really good read. The ending was a little bit lacking for me. I felt like it was a little anticlimactic, but, you know, what are you going to do? Not everything could be wrapped up in a neat package. And maybe that was the point of this. Um, and But the last page was kind of a setup for being, you know, well, well, I won't tell you, but the end of it makes sense, but it wasn't what I wanted. Um, I don't know, outside of that, uh, that's basically what I've been doing. Um, also, I finished my first script uh, for my new comic. It's called Isolation. Uh, we'll be working on that uh, throughout the year. Me and uh, the artist that I found, Igor Cordy. Uh, or, not Igor Cordy. No, this guy's much better than Igor Cordy. Igor Cordy sucked. This is Igor Glushkin. Um, and a phenomenal guy. Uh, real easy to get along with. Um, yeah. And he's, he's turning in some stellar stuff for the comic. Um, if you're not following him on... Twitter you should. Uh, if you're following me, go ahead and look him up through my list, uh, Igor Design. Uh, you know, drop him a line, say what's up. Maybe he'll uh, drop you off a picture. Uh, you know, let you see some what we're working on. Uh, so, other than that, I don't have much else to say. I'm going to get back out there and enjoy the sun. Uh, sorry this wasn't too crazy, but I'm doing this on a balcony, and I know there's people down there looking up going like, what the fuck is that guy talking about? So, uh, that's it. Um, so, again, I'm going to try to get these things going again, I swear, I swear, I swear I'm trying by Odin's beard, um, but it's just not getting going. Um, but again, I am over at Multiversity Comics, so if you want to check in and see what I'm up to, uh, multiversitycomics.com, you can find me there. Um, yeah, uh, hopefully next week I'll, I'll get this going again when I'm back home in Alaska, so, uh, from Hawaii, hang loose.